Hello and welcome to this week's review and I'm looking at a pair of floor standing speakers for you from Monitor Audio. These are the Gold 200s and the price is £3,350. Well hang on a minute you cry. You've already reviewed these speakers and yeah, yeah you're right, I have. However, there are two reasons I want to look again at the Monitor Audio. 200s. There are two tasks I need to perform, one of which is long, long overdue. Firstly, this new review hopes to address a number of comments. Comments I've got now and again from YouTube viewers, probably mostly from website readers and the odd social media commentator, Instagram, places like that. And the question is this, should you, should you, the reader or the viewer, take note of my old reviews. Come to that, any old reviews from any reviewer or any magazine on a website or anywhere else. Are old reviews per se still of use years later? Do they have a, a kind of sell-by date where they become useless? How long should a hi-fi review last in terms of the advice it gives you. How long does it remain relevant? Are they still of use as a reference? That is, if I reviewed product X right now, would my review right now hold true years hence, in my opinion? Would I change my mind over that time? A product I liked, say, I don't know, five years ago, would I still like it now or would I do a complete 180 and see things in the product I didn't see earlier? Or for those features I loved back then, would I now dislike those same features? Tastes, of course, change. Age, well, it does funny things to funny people. I was asked about this point and I replied way back when that I would make a note and I would circle back and I would look again. Well, I thought the time had come. So I've chosen the Gold 200s to do that very thing, to do that investigation. But why? Why am I doing that specifically with the Gold 200 speakers? Well, we come to my second reason. And for some of you, this will be a far more important reason than the first one. For some of you, this may be a game changer for the monitor audio gold 200s. But we'll see. So this second reason then, well this one is way overdue and to be honest with you I've been racked with guilt for a long time on this one point. You see these floor standers, they're slightly unusual in that they are in fact four ohm designs. Four. They can be played in eight ohm hi-fi systems and they work very well in an 8 ohm system. But ideally, well, to perform at their peak, you should be connecting your speaker cables one end into the Monitor Audio Go 200s and to the end in 4 ohm pots on the back of your amplifier. Now, most people can't do that because most amplifiers do not have specialist 4 ohm sockets. And that's fine. That's fine. I see most amplifiers, they kind of work on a range. So for most amplifiers, they will cover between 4 and all the way up to 16 ohms in most cases. So most amplifiers, they can kind of cope with any kind of speaker. And again, that's fine. And in my 8 ohm system, as my original review system was, they sounded great. Saying that though, saying that, there is nothing quite like having a specialist set of connections for any particular piece of equipment that wants them. Hence, for the Gold 200s, really, ideally, well, they really want a set of 4 ohm specific sockets for 4 ohm specific speakers. And I wanted to do that test. Now, I have amplifiers here with 4 ohm speaker sockets. 
So it's about time I addressed this niche yet important design wrinkle. you then. The Monitor Audio Gold 200s are three-way designs featuring two 165mm, that's about six and a half inches, RDT, that stands for Rigid Diaphragm Technology, and they sit beneath a 64mm, that's about two and a half inches, C-CAM mid-range driver, and that sits underneath what looks like a ribbon tweeter. It's actually an MPD high frequency transducer module. And as I say, it looks a little bit like a ribbon. At the rear of the cabinet, you will find not one, but two Hive 2 base ports, plus binding posts for your speaker cables. So let's start all over again with the basic sound tests. First question, has a gap of what's it been, three and a half years, has that gap changed my point of view of the 200s? I was interested to know myself. You see, time has not only passed, but I haven't used the 200s since I reviewed them three and a half years ago. I have totally forgotten how they sounded. If you ask me now, I wouldn't have a clue. I'd have to check my review. And on that subject, I purposefully did not read my old review until I had completed this new set of sound tests. Because I wanted to see, just for my own benefit, what the differences were and are, if any. Now, before we get to that comparison, that A-B comparison between the old review and this current review, let's do some sound tests, shall we? I began with CD and an early 80s pressing of Pink Floyd's The Wall on CD, and I chose the high energy track Run Like Hell, one of my favorite Floyd tracks, incidentally. And the reason I picked this track, well, I wanted to press the monitor audios from the off. This is a busy song. It has humongous bass, and the upper frequencies, well, they are pushed to the max, and it takes a mighty speaker design to keep control of this one. Now, to begin the tests, I wanted to know exactly what I was getting into here, what I was getting for my money in terms of the 200s. So I compared the 200s with a pair of sub £1,000 speakers. So I picked my reference floor standards for that price point, the Q Acoustic 3050Is. Now starting this track, I immediately noticed the extra focus around the soundstage. The 200s collected all of the upper frequency information, tidied the whole thing up, and collected it in and around the stereo image. Mid-range noise from these speakers was very low indeed. Hence, clarity increased, which meant that the lyrics were easier to discern, and backing vocals were smoother with more reverb. The backing vocals themselves sat in a newfound space that added a 3D aspect to the music. The tweeter, well, it really earns its corn here. Now, bass on the 3050Is was impressive. Big, room-filling, very nice. But when the percussion first appeared on this track via the Gold 200s, well, it hit my jaw with a right cross, and that sent me flying across the room to land in a heap in the corner. Put it this way, bass was firm, it was precise, it was direct. And let me emphasize the word, deep, for the price, because you've got to put all these things in perspective. For the price, bass was seriously impressive. In fact, you can use this bass to dig for oil. I then turned to vinyl and I chose Roy Wood's LP, Boulders, and the track 
Nancy Sing Me a Song, a sort of lilting, low-key, melodic piece. For this, I brought in a pair of Monitor Audio's own Silver 300s, and you can hear the kind of house-style maturity, that kind of richness in tone and presentation. There was that 3D effect again around the stereo image and the structure around the soundstage. Everything was in order, everything was where it should be. There was, for both speakers, when you pushed the music, there was a slight edge around the upper mids and the treble. As I say, especially when you push the volume during crescendos. But I would also say that the Gold 200s do provide more control around those upper frequencies. And there's a greater solidity in the bass region as well. Both models, the Gold 200s and the Silver 300s, well, they have an airy upper mid-range, but the Golds better controlled this sensitive area. Again, I think the tweeter has a big part to play in that. Nipping back to Pink Floyd and that same track, Run Like Hell, and the rather different, yet similarly priced, Quad 57s, my electrostatics. The quads, while well, they further extended control around the upper mids, and they added to the fragility over the upper mids and the treble. But they could not compete with the 200s bass performance. The gold 200s were dominant in this respect, while the overall presentation was rather civilized and considered by the quads. The same presentation via the gold 200s was epic, it was majestic. Now, let me address that 4 ohm mode now. This was something I did not do in the original review, but I've done now. And I played the Roy Wood track in this mode, in 4 ohm mode. Now, in the actual track itself, apart from the vocal, you've got drums, you've got acoustic guitars, there's a bass guitar, there's a cello, and even possibly a mandolin in there somewhere. In terms of sound, the gold 200s in 4 ohm mode, a complete revelation. If you have these 4 ohm speakers, if you move from 8 ohm mode on your amp to 4 ohm mode on your amp, it's a bit like moving, in general terms, it's a bit like moving from single-ended mode to balanced mode on just about anything. So what do I mean by that? Well, in 4 ohm mode, the noise dropped everywhere, it just dropped further than it had previously. That slight treble upper mid-range edge at high volumes, gone. Roy Wood's double-tracked lead vocal was far more complex and interesting now. Bass relaxed into a kind of pleasing low thud. Bass guitar, it sounded twangier. I gotta say, there was extra twang in the bass guitar. Separation between instruments was much wider now. And because of that, there was more general detail extraction across the entire soundstage. In short, well, my jaw dropped listening to these speakers in 4 ohm mode. I did not expect the improvements in sonic quality that I heard. And that's basically the review. Now, I need to gather and corral all of that information and I need to give you some final thoughts, and I'll do that with some pros and cons and the rating. Okay, let's address reason one for doing this review at all. When you compare, or when I compare, this review with my earlier review, well, it's remarkably consistent, I would say, and with some relief. The main difference between the two were mainly based on style, the mood I was in on that particular day, what thoughts were rolling around my noggin at that point, that kind of thing. 
but the core points remained the same between the two reviews, which is, as I say, a bit of a relief. Now, I did focus on different areas in both reviews, and you can check them yourself. I possibly spent a bit more time talking about the Silver 300s and the Quad 57s this time around, but to be frank, in terms of style and quality of the review itself, well, some of my comments in the first review were better explained and conveyed, but I have to add, vice versa. Pros and cons for both, really. This review, the second review, did address certain aspects more successfully. So, my recommendation, read both, and you'll get a fuller review, I suppose. Bottom line on that initial question, yes, I think older reviews are valuable for the prospective customer, and they serve as a useful tool, a useful reference. If the review was properly conducted in the first place, then it will stand the test of time. That's the first question answered as far as I'm concerned. In broad terms and focusing on the speakers themselves, well, in 8-ohm mode, and I emphasize 8-ohm mode, the Monitor Audio Gold 200s are speakers for the big occasion. They provide a big bass performance. They are bold. They are forthright in mid-range detail and lots of detail spews forth. But then, these speakers, actually I found also they were very useful for the small occasion, for low-key introspective songs, as I heard via my Roy Wood LP. The extra focus around the upper mids and the treble also means low volume playback is a highlight, and if if you are unable to blast your speakers because of neighborly concerns, then consider these speakers for that occasion. But it's in 4 ohm mode that these speakers really come alive. After all, that's what they're designed to be, are they not? These are 4 ohm speakers. That's what it says on the spec sheet not 8 ohm. Now, at 8 ohms, they work very well indeed, but there will always be a sonic compromise in that mode. So, give the Gold 200s the right tools for the job, and they'll reward you in spades. Bottom line then, well, whatever mode you decide to use, 4 ohm or 8 ohm, a lower or higher volume, the low noise, high clarity performance from the Gold 200s, drag out maximum detail, blending with passion and musical joy. Hence, these are truly speakers for all seasons. Pros and cons. And in the good section, well, the star, the unexpected star of this show is 4 ohm mode. They're on a different level in 4 ohm mode. Amazing speakers. Highly recommended. Now, in general terms, whether it's 4 or 8 ohm mode, I really appreciate the clarity. These are low noise speakers. Clarity is able to fly. Bass. These are meaty, beaty bass speakers, and I love that side of their personality. Mid range focus. Well, there is plenty of detail, and the mid range focus really helped that. And the mid range focus also helps these speakers to perform very well at low volumes. Treble detail, well, that folded tweeter, it worked very well indeed, and it really helped the high frequency detail to come through. And in the bad section, well, nothing at all. And because of that, I'm gonna give the monitor audio not one, but two award-winning ratings. Why? Well, in 8 ohm mode, I will give the monitor audio Go 200s a groovy, an 8 out of 10. But in 4 ohm mode, well, it's on another level. In 4 ohm mode, it's going to get a 9 and a deeply groovy. Congratulations to Monitor Audio. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. Can I ask you, please, just down there somewhere, if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons, I'd really appreciate it. Down there, too, I'll put the contact point for the company, Monitor Audio. And in addition to that, there are further links to my website, my Facebook group, and my Patreon page, which also has lots of Hi-Fi News Etc. videos now. They're all building up. It's not just Hi-Fi News, there's lots of trivia, 
and there's extra bits and pieces. Last week, there was no news at all, actually. There's lots of other vinyl-related goodies and bits and pieces and advice on buying records and antiques furs and what is a remainder vinyl and stuff like that. So all kinds of extra bits are shoved into these videos. Check them out. Anyway, I'll be back on Friday with a music alert video. You want to see what I've been getting during the week in terms of physical musical product, or rather physical music product. That's what I should be saying, isn't it? Then check out that video, and I hope to see you there. Hope to have your company. Until then, folks, bye-bye for now.